Hello everyone, this is Jake and I'm going to be bringing you another episode of building a web server using Python. Um, in today's episode, we're going to be going over databases. So we're going to look at uh, the Flasker tutorial that's on the official Flask website. If you click through there to the tutorial, you'll, you can see all the different steps. And uh, you should probably actually go through this before you start this tutorial. Um, at the very least, look over the code. Um, but I'm going to be taking this example source and we're going to be starting there and we're going to look at uh, the database that is in the Flasker tutorial. Then we're going to roll our own um, database using JSON and then we're going to use SQL Alchemy to show an alternative way of using um, the database that Flasker uses. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I've got the tutorial code loaded up in my editor and I'm just going to make a couple quick changes here. Uh, the first change is this database path won't work for me because I'm running Windows. And also we've got to call initDB the first time to set up our initial database, uh, blank database. So in order to do that, I'm just going to stick this at the bottom. And then I'm going to run it. And then while it's running, I'm going to delete that and save it again and it'll reload. Uh, if I left that line down there, it would just keep clearing out the database each time. So let's go and take a look at what the Flasker tutorial is all about. Alright, so here it is. It's got a basic login mechanism like one that we created for a previous video. Once you're logged in, you can uh, enter blog posts. So you can see that puts an entry here and we can put another one in. and that puts it um, above the other one because it's in uh, the youngest first as a typical blog would be. And if we log out you can see very nice there we've got our our posts. Uh, so let's go look at the code. So as we click over back into the editor we can see that it's actually dropped a database file here. And if we open that database file uh, we see a lot of weird characters. That's because this file is actually a binary file. It's not meant to be edited in a text editor like what we opened it in. Um, but we can see some stuff that looks familiar. Uh, down here is, is what I basically typed in um, to enter stuff in my blog. And there's also, if you've gone through the tutorial, this should look familiar. This is actually the definition of our data that gets put into the database. Uh, we also noticed at the top that this is SQLite, so this is actually a SQLite database. If you go back over to the source code, we can see and confirm that this is indeed SQLite because we're using the built-in Python SQLite uh, library to access it. So uh, why SQLite? Well, SQLite's a very common database. Um, it's accessed using the SQL query language, which we can scroll down and look at the code. Uh, our show entries function is actually called to display all of the entries and this is actually a SQL query string so it's selecting the title and text from our entry table and that table was created when we did that initial setup and it loaded this SQL, uh, SQL schema file which this should look identical to what was in our Flasker DB so that's kind of how SQL works. Um, the SQLite database only really supports, as far as I know, um, the execute function where you type in your SQL database. Um, but I think a good way to um, move forward is to uh, roll our own database and see what it's like to do that and discuss the uh, ups and downs to doing that sort of thing. So let's go ahead and do that. So in order to roll our database, we're going to need some kind of protocol to store our data in. And JSON is an excellent format to do that in because a lot of stuff supports it and it's pretty readable. And also Python has it built in. So we're going to store, instead of a DB file, we're going to store a JSON file on disk. Um, so let's scroll down and let's just start tearing this code up. We don't really need the connect and init functions anymore, at least not the way that I'm going to write this. Uh, you can still use those though. Um, but what we need to do is uh, basically we're going to try to open this database file. 
And since we don't have an init anymore, this might fail the first time because that file doesn't exist. So if that does fail, it'll throw an IO error. And then we can just create uh, a JSON string manually here. And it'll contain something called entries, which would be a list. So this looks a lot like the typical Python dictionary syntax. So I've got one entry in my dictionary called entries and it is it points to a list. So right here instead of connecting to a B, DB we're going to call json.load load string and we're going to load that DB. So this will either pull it from disk or it will load this blank database for me. So when we tear down, um, instead of closing, we're actually going to uh, write this. So we're going to do open database in write mode, and we're going to write. And Jason has a also a dump string, which we'll call on our database object. If you can spell correctly. So there we have the basic uh, before and after request, which will open our database and then write the database before and after each request. So now we need to scroll down a little bit further. Um, obviously these SQL query commands won't work anymore. So the way we take care of that is, um, so this selects the title and the text we don't really need that at all or this and it just so happens that this is exactly the format that I wrote this in so if I do my DB and I do entries that's all we need and then here uh, inserting values in instead of doing that we're gonna take our DB at entries I'm going to set that equal to a new dictionary with title and text as keys. And we're going to stick this in there. And also this. And delete that. And we no longer need to commit. Okay, so that's not clear. Oh, this is actually a. We need to uh, insert this. Because this is a list. So we're inserting dictionaries into a list. Hopefully, that's not too confusing. I think it'll be a little bit more clear once we take a look at our database. Let's go ahead and open up our Flasker again. So I reload and everything's gone and that's expected because I changed my database. I'm going to go ahead and log in and I'm going to enter a title and some text. And that worked the first time. All right. If I enter another thing here. Oh, it's working. Excellent. Let's go back into our editor. And we can see uh, flasker.json pop up. So this is our new database that we just rolled. If we open that, uh, it's a little hard to read. Let's make that a little bit easier. In our teardown, instead of just dumping it, we're going to dump it, but we're going to dump it with an indent of four. So then let me go make something else happen so that it reformats. So I'm going to open my JSON up again and uh, that's a lot clearer. So you can see um, it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty much like Python dictionaries and lists and we can read easily each of our entries. It's very clear what's going on compared to the uh, SQLite database. It's just you don't really know what's going on here. So that's a huge advantage to rolling your own database and uh, using JSON or something else like YAML that's really readable. And I can even 
put entries in here. Oops. Text first, of course. Otherwise, that won't work. Test. So I can easily do that, and I'll save it. Oh. Editor caught a problem there, and if I go over here and reload. There we go. I just stuck that in there between those two. So that's a big benefit of rolling your own or using JSON. Is it's editable, it's readable, um, not like the SQLite. Now the SQLite database is going to be a lot faster. It's going to be have other features like uh, atomic commits and things like that. Um, so you just need to do your research, figure out what you need. If you're making a huge site, you might want to just go straight to the SQL type databases. Um, if you're rolling your own small thing, experimenting, it can be very handy to just roll your own and experiment, use JSON or something else. Um, yeah, so that's basically how you'd roll your own database. So now let's look at uh, creating a database using SQL Alchemy, which is a powerful um, object relational model uh, database access. So uh, SQL Alchemy actually uses SQLite, but it's it's not the same way you access it. You actually access it using objects that know how to create SQL queries that will pull back the data. So let's go ahead and do that. So for this next section, I'm going to be cheating a little bit because there's a lot of code to cover. So I'm going to be pasting from an off-screen source. So uh, SQL Alchemy isn't built in, so you're going to need to download it and install it. Um, and then I've done a lot of imports up here that kind of make it uh, easier, nicer code later on. Uh, we need to change our database to a URI and I'm going to change the name of it so that we'll be able to tell the difference between our previous database and this one. And we're going to, I'm just going to copy paste all this code here and then explain it. So for SQL Alchemy, uh, you're going to create what it calls an engine, and then you're going to create a scoped session to that engine. Uh, this session is kind of cool because it handles threading for you. You don't have to worry about like we did previously um, this before request you don't even have to do that anymore so that's what the the DB session gets you and there's some settings that you can play with if you're interested uh, and then there's this base class so, so SQL Alchemy will provide you with this declarative base class which you can then create a class uh, which will automatically knows how to map to a SQL database so I created these same um, columns that you remember in the schema SQL ID title and text we have those same columns but we're defining them in a much more Pythonic way and then we go on to we can create anything else in our class that sets values and and is handy for us to use uh, so this constructor is just a normal Python constructor so uh, we've also reintroduced the init DB, which will start up our database for the first time. Um, and that basically works by saying, hey, base class, what has implemented you? Uh, and then it'll create all of those in the database. Um, our teardown still needs to exist. And that just removes the session. Uh, that way it doesn't stay open and cause all kinds of bad things. So OK, on to the interesting part. How do we actually query this guy? So instead of writing a SQL query like before, what we're actually going to do is um, just use our entry class since it's hooked up to the SQL engine. Um, we're going to say, hey, query yourself and order by descending your ID and oops, give me all of them. So um, this is kind of like the SQL query language only it's a lot more Pythonic and and you're just dealing with classes and function calls rather than a whole new SQL query language. So how do you add an entry to this? Well it's actually easier than even querying. Uh, you just create a new entry 
um, object. And instead of that guy, we're going to take the request form. Okay, so we're creating a new entry class, and this is basically the same if it wasn't SQL Alchemy at all. And then we're going to use the DB session to add this class, and then we're going to tell it to commit. So, I mean, that is super straightforward. If I save this and start that up, and go over here and refresh this guy, uh, we get an explosion because I forgot. Uh, we need to start this up, so I'm going to grab the init db and do like I did before where I put that down there. Head back over and refresh. And I need to delete this, otherwise all my stuff's going to constantly be deleted. So this should work. Excellent. And the second one should go on top. Great. So that's how you use SQL Alchemy. I um, hope you enjoyed this uh, edition. A lot of people asked um, for how to do databases. Uh, as usual, if you've made it this far, leave a comment and let me know how you like this. And uh, any suggestions as to other videos would be great. So I'll see you guys later.